Welcome back to Llama Mama Kayla's Yarn Tube. I'm Kayla. Thanks for stopping by and visiting with me today. I'm so happy that you're here and I'm happy that I'm able to be here too. <laughs> I hope you're all having a great day. It is Sunday. This is Sunday's video, so we're here trucking on. Today I am drinking some coffee that my friend Lisa sent to me. She sent me a box of 40 assorted coffees. I don't have the box anymore, but it was just assorted. Baby, I can't pick you up. <laughs> it's an assorted box of coffees from Amazon. Um, if you go in there and look, there's all kinds. This particular box, I don't believe has any repeats, but I am drinking um, this particular cup is Cold Stone Birthday Cake. It tastes really good. It does. Um, I don't know. You can't really tell. I have a peep. I have a yellow peep floating in my coffee today. <laughs> Just to give it a little extra something. <laughs> but um, anyway, I'm enjoy I'm a This is my first. I know it's not the first of the month. I'm kind of late getting started on it. But this is the first of my coffees that I'm tasting this month from Lisa's box so all this month um, I plan on trying a new coffee sample from that sample box but anyway I really do like this cold stone birthday cake I've drank several sips of it before I started the video and it really is delish so anyway um I did finish my sweetheart blanket that I worked on every day of the month in February. <laughs> I worked on that blanket every day and it just grew and grew and grew. It started from one granny square and grew, but we'll talk about that in just a moment. Um, I want to give you the measurements and all that of that, but I wanted to tell y'all, I showed in a video once last month, my house purse is what I'm calling it. I believe this is an Easter basket from Five Below, and it has little frogs on it and little mushrooms. And I think it's so cute. Um, when I saw it, I wanted it. <laughs> I wanted an Easter basket. No, I wanted the basket, and then I thought, <clears throat> I, I have trouble. Even before my surgery, even when I had that extra finger. I just had so much trouble carrying stuff around the house. I just, I drop everything I pick up. I can't pick anything up without dropping it. And so now it's going to be worse, you know. So I got me this basket to be my house purse to carry things from room to room. Of course, not large, large things, but it's a good size basket. Um, I'll tell you what I have in it for today. <laughs> I have a throw up bag. <laughs> That I'm carrying around with me. I have some chapstick and then I have um, a bottle of pills and a note that I don't want to lose. So that's what I have in there today and when I go to bed at night or anytime I go to my room to lay down I put my phones in there and um, you know when I get in the bed I'll put my glasses in there. Anything that I'm going to need to take to my room with me to lay down and anything I'm going to need to bring back up here with me. So that's what I'm doing. I have a house purse and I just, I just love it. It was five bucks at five below. And if you don't have a five below where you live, they do ship, but it's like seven ninety five for shipping. So that's kind of ridiculous. I mean, for one item, I don't know. It probably goes up the more you buy. I don't know. Because I've never had anything shipped from there. Because I do have one located pretty close to my house. I love Five Below. Like, I could go and spend a whole paycheck in Five Below. <laughs> I love Five Below. They always have just the cutest little trinket things that I love and all that. So, anyway. Um, it's like, I'm trying to think of what kind of store it is. It's like... It's not like a resale store, like Big Lots and Ollie's, where they get things in from other stores. 
these, this is more like a, I don't know, they have everything. They have like a toy section, a stationery, a little book section, they have a large candy section, chips, drinks. Uh, they always have like a holiday section, t-shirts, they sell t-shirts for five bucks, they have makeup. Um, hair stuff, um, some shoes, some pajama pants, all kinds of cutesy stuff. Then they have a few little electronics, um, some little sports things like some balls and stuff. But they have a lot. They have a lot. Of, it's, a, it's a small store, but they have a lot jam packed in there. And then they have um, most things are five dollars or below, like a dollar, dollar fifty, two dollars, three or five. I have noticed like around Christmas mostly they have items that are um, might be 10 or 15 or maybe even $20 but they're larger items like I think they had a karaoke machine for 20 bucks. I'm trying to see what the cat is doing <laughs> and um, I got distracted. <laughs> Sorry. They have lots of little things, trinket things that I like, and I don't know, anything. <laughs> Try to see what the cat is doing, because the cat's, well, we suspect Sissy, has stole Big Daddy's glasses. You know, that she steals my stuff all the time. His glasses came up gone. They were on the table next to the couch where he sits, his little love seat in the den where he sits, and his glasses were there. Then they were gone. Probably Sissy took them. And we don't know where they are. Or what kind of condition they're going to be in when they get some back. I feel like we're going to have to get the kids from down the road. They don't live on our road, but they live a road over. I feel like we're going to have to get them in here and offer a reward for whoever finds his glasses. I don't know. I don't know, because me and him can't get down and look. We can't get down on our knees and look under stuff and such I figure um the glasses could be under our bed for who knows who knows where they are but we're gonna have to find them somehow some way <laughs> I don't know what he can't read without them and they're his prescription glasses Okay, so, um, my blanket. Okay, so you can go back to February the 1st and watch the first two episodes of this uh, February, um, February 1st and February 2nd if you want to know a lot more details about this blanket. But this is my blanket. I finished it in the wee hours of the morning before I went and had finger surgery. <laughs> I had my finger amputated um, this past Friday, and oh, I always see a little peekaboo, <laughs> peekaboo hole there. <laughs> and so I finished the blanket in the wee hours of the morning before I had to be at the hospital at 6 a.m., which we got there at 5:30 a.m. But I finished this blanket before I went. And so I was thinking for you who, for everyone who has been with me all along, and know. I was thinking I was going to do about three rounds of, trying to find the end here, about three rounds of the gray as a border. I ended up going around it twice because I just had other things I had to get done. You know, I had so much I had to get done. I had house stuff I wanted to accomplish before I went and just um, a lot of things like that. And so, what's she got now? She has it's a sissy. She always has something, and it do, usually doesn't belong to her. <laughs> Trying to find my, my um, edge with the blanket. I don't know where it's. Oh, here it is. It's all rolled up. I ended up going around twice, and um, but I can always, I can always join in again and go around another time if I want to, but I doubt it because I'm done with this blanket. So, anyway, I did go around it twice to give a little bit of a border. I think three times would probably look better, um, but it is what it is. 
the blanket ended up being four and a half feet wide and five and a half feet long. I expected it to be a lot longer than it is wider, but we measured that several times and that's what it come out. Because as you know, the center started out as three granny squares together. And then I granny stitched around that and just went around it every day, every day, every day. And watched the blanket grow and grow and grow. And it is amazing, like just crocheting on this blanket for an hour or so a day and look how big it grew i mean i can't hold it all the way up to be honest like let's see here's a corner <laughs> and here's the other corner and that's the length of it yeah, that's the length of it. So, it did turn out. And, you know, some places, um, the colors did overlap if it was a larger ball. So, what I did was I started with those three granny squares in the middle. And I just went in my, I was, I was just went into my yarn room and picked some yarns. And I was going to pick, like, red, pink, white, and purple is the colors I had in mind. And I got in there, and I ended up not using red at all. This is actually, um, this color right here. It kind of looks red. <clears throat> it's actually a fuchsia. And I used all different brands. I have Craft Smart in this. Um, maybe some I Love This Yarn. Uh, Mainstay. Big Twist. I'm trying to think of all the different brands. But it's, it's all um, basic brands of yarn companies um no fancy yarns but when i got in my yarn room and i was looking to see what i wanted to use i think it's best to show this with a, um with one of the granny squares i ended up picking this light purple that's a red heart um this one might be a red heart that's a craft smart maybe a mainstay or something maybe i love this yarn i'm not sure that's a mainstay. Oh, that, that white is a red heart. Then a mainstay. And then that might be, I love this yarn. I can't really remember, but I know I used like all those in here. <laughs> but um, I ended up, I spotted this variegated yarn right here. It is a mainstay. I believe it's the purple multi. And it has purple, dark, dark purple, light purple. Um, a medium purple and a pink and maybe even some white somewhere in it. I don't know. But that's the colors that um, were in that variegated yarn. And so I spotted that while I was in my room and I was like, oh, I like that. And so then I just pulled some colors that went with it. You know, purple and um, different colors that I thought would complement that. And I did throw in a white and a gray. So, and I started off with a granny square that was five rounds, and I did each one in the same color on the last row. I did a white around. Yeah, you know, the white was my fifth, right? One, two, three, four, five, yes. And so I did white on the outside of each one of these squares, all three of them, and then I joined them together and then I went around them with the variegated yarn and then a gray yarn. Then I started my color sequence over, my color sequence from here out to the gray. So it's pink, light pink, fuchsia, purple, white, variegated, gray. That was my color sequence. So I went ahead and did one round of each all the way up to here. Okay, well common sense would tell you that you're going around a bigger blanket, bigger rounds, you're going to run out of yarn, right? So, I didn't want to do that, so I just started balling up some random size balls. Like, they looked to be about the same size, but they weren't the same tension. And I was just rolling up those balls, and I'd set out my sequence, and I would put that in there, whatever size. Now, I could have just crocheted off of that skein, but then I would have been controlling it, and I probably would have tried to make it, you know, all the way around. And I didn't want to do that because I knew I'd run out of yarn. Now, I never went back into my room and got any more colors 
like what I brought out that first day, that is what's in this blanket. I never added any other skeins to it. Oh, except the gray. I did on the gray on the very last round. That's right. Um, and I, ha I probably had enough to go around it, but it was a little bit two different shades. I'll show that in a second. But anyway, so that's what I did every day that I you know, worked on this. I just used those balls. I didn't crochet from the skein. And sometimes the balls went all the way around. Sometimes they did not. That was the randomness of it. And, but it played out fine. The colors, you know, the way they played out from that. Um, the eye kind of tricks you when you look at the center and those first few rounds that do go all the way around. Your eyes kind of trick you to think that it does all the way. But there's times where it, some colors overlapped some colors didn't go all the way around, but it still played out just fine. Now on my last, when I got to the gray, I had I had some left on that skein, but I really was thinking I was gonna do three rounds on the edge. And so I um, was thinking I probably didn't have enough to do three rounds. So I did get another gray out and I, you can't, I don't think you can really tell the difference that gray is more silver, and this gray is more, um, a little bit darker. Yeah, you, I can tell the difference here looking at it. I don't know that you can on camera, but this one's a little silver, and this one's a little bit more gray, darker gray, but it's not dark gray. Anyway, that that's it right there. So, I did get a new skein to do that border. I ended up not going the three rounds. I was just running out of time. I had so much I wanted to accomplish before I went to the hospital because I knew afterwards I wasn't going to be able to. So that's the deets on that. Ended up being four and a half feet wide and five and a half feet long. And so that is a big blanket. To work on it just about an hour a day, that blanket grew fast. So don't be intimidated by doing a blanket like that. I mean, even if you do... This particular blanket, I started with the three granny squares together. Now, let me say something about that in case you don't go back and watch the <laughs> beginning videos. You don't want to do too long of a strip in the middle because your proportions won't be correct. You know, you, you'll have this super long blanket and not very wide. <laughs> Maybe if you're really skinny, it would work for you, <laughs> but that wasn't going to work for me. And so, um, you know, I need I needed it to be wide, but I needed it to be long too. So I think that's about the most you could make that centerpiece and still um, come out proportioned wise okay. Because keep that in mind, the longer that is in the middle, the longer your blanket's gonna be, but the skinnier it's gonna be, unless you just keep going around it and then you have a super long blanket that you can't really do a lot with because it's like, twice as long as your body to get it you know wide so just keep that in mind when you're if you do that that particular blanket i did the three squares um even if you do a blanket where you chain um i forgot my number but um i've got it wrote down but if you chain the number of chains and then start going around it in the granny square sequence and you know start from there um whether you do a blanket either way of that or any other kind of blanket, just crocheting on it about an hour a day can grow into something that size. So don't be intimidated with it. You don't have to finish the whole blanket in one day. It took me 29 days to make that blanket in February. <laughs> so it was a fun project. And the way I did all of February was I um, crocheted on that blanket while I was ask answering questions that you guys had put in the comments. I loved doing that, and we're going to do more videos like that in the future. Sissy's up here just walking around, like, looking for something of mine to steal. <laughs> do y'all have stealing cats that are thieves and steal all your stuff? Like, what do you do? <laughs> as far as I know, this is the first time she stole anything of Big Daddy's, but she steals my stuff all the time. I'm always, like, catching her through my stuff. <laughs> anyway. <laughs>
what do you guys have going on this week? Like, what's up? What will you be doing this week? I have a doctor's appointment on, um, well, I have my home health nurse will probably come on Wednesday. She, um, she come this past Wednesday, and I would say she drove up at 9.53 a.m., and she was back in her car at 10.02 a.m. Yes, that's how long she was at my house, from 9.53, and she was in the car then. She had to walk all the way up to my house, do what she was going to do, which was take my temperature, <laughs> take my blood pressure, and try to get my oxygen thing, which never works on my fingers. And she was back in her car at 10.02. I called my friend Angela. I said, it's 10.02 and she's back in her car. Because I had talked to Angela before she came. And she drove up at 9.53. And I called Angela right back. I said, 10.02, she's back in her car. So, yeah, that's all they're going to do is just check my temperature and blood pressure. And that's not... I'm not in, like, this critical condition where I need that checked. <laughs> that, you know, I'm not in any kind of critical condition where I need that checked. So, my doctor just does not understand that home health doesn't come in and do all that kind of stuff. Now, if you're on some kind of um, state agency, if you're on some kind of, like, Medicaid, Medicare, and you're getting some, something else... You, probably, you might have an agency that can come in and do more for you and all that kind of stuff. But I do not. I have Blue Cross Blue Shield. I don't qualify for anything else. Never will. <laughs> and um, that's just all they're going to do. They're not going to come in and assist with feeding tube feedings and stuff like that. Tube feedings and wound care such as uh, aromastoma and all that. They're just not going to assist with all that. So... I don't know. I don't know. It's kind of a waste of time. And see, I have to pay my portion of that. And I haven't got out of them yet, like, how much am I going to owe per visit. But it's not worth it. And like Angela said, even if it's only $2, which it would be more than that, I think it was 10 with the agency before. My part was $10 a visit. But like Angela said, even if it's $2, it's $2, you know, for them to take your blood pressure <laughs> You can do that yourself, and that's true. We have a little blood pressure machine. I could take my blood pressure myself, I mean, if I thought it was high. But anyway, um, yeah, I just don't know. I don't know how that's going to work out. I, I don't see this beneficial for me as I have to, <clears throat> you know, plan for to be available and be here, be ready, dressed, whatever, for them to come. Um... And then they'll come in for, you know, five minutes, and then they're gone. So, I don't know. So, anyway, I have that on Wednesday. She She's going to come every Wednesday until, I, you know, I'm trying to see if this is going to benefit me in any other way. Like, are they going to flush my port with heparin once a month? That would be worth it. That That visit would be worth it if they did that. Or if they did anything else, it might be worth it. <laughs> um, and then Thursday, I have, um, I see my surgeon to see about my hand. And then Friday, we have an appointment, I have an appointment in Shreveport with my pain pump doctor. So I have that pain pump in my side right here. And so, um, he will be upping my morphine 20%. Now, I get a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of morphine. It's like point zero something, okay? So, I'm not getting a big dose of morphine by no means. Like, it's not even up to the therapeutic... The, your, I can't even talk. A therapeutic amount yet to relieve my chronic pain all over my body. So, it's not even up to an amount of that yet. So... But he raises it every two weeks, 20%. And so we'll just see. We'll just keep going back and let him raise that. <laughs> Trying to set this on the coaster where it won't fall spill. <laughs> um, 
And then I think that's about all I have going on this weekend. It's Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Those appointments. See how that goes. Now, Thursday, I will have to take Big Daddy to work. Because um, he cannot miss Thursday and Friday from work. Even partial day Thursday. I think my appointment's at like 11. So, if he stayed home and took me after, and, and took me to my appointment and went afterwards, they would almost be gone and it would just be pointless. So, I'm going to have to take him to work Thursday and take myself to the doctor and then go back and get him. And that's hard on me. So, now we're drive there, I will drive home, go to my appointment, I will drive there, I will drive home <laughs> to pick him up. So, that part is hard on me and the nerves in my legs that night will be fired up and then back to back that's Thursday and then Friday a trip to Shreveport do the stuff we got to do there and then back home which is about two and a half hour drive the nerves in my legs are gonna be fired up <laughs> so uh, and I I have tried to take gabapentin years ago for neuropathy and nerves in the legs and all that but I'm allergic to anything in the GABA family so I cannot take that medication but anyway um so it's just a lot <laughs> y'all my hair is like just pitiful I, I know you cannot see how thin it is I did not realize this um, my hair should be all the same length I have not got a haircut and it is not like it is just, it's not the same length. It is just gone. And I wonder if it has to do with those infusions that I took here a while back. They were very, very um, potent infusions that I took. It's supposed to stay in your body for um, six months, that medication is. I go back and do that again in May, which will be coming up soon. I'll get those two infusions back to back. And then supposedly wait another six months to get the infusions again. I'm wondering if that's what's, you know, doing this to my hair. Um, I hadn't had a ponytail on my hair for a long time because I've been just taking it, twisting it up and just putting a clippy on top of my hair because that's all I can do. I can't do a ponytail by myself. And so that's what I was doing pre-hand surgery. Well, the morning... The morning I was going to the hospital, I told their dad, I said, we should put my hair in a ponytail because you have to put that blue um, net hat thing on to go into surgery. And I thought, I was thinking it would be easier if I just had a ponytail than trying to get all this just up in there because you can't have any metal. And so I found a ponytail holder without any metal. He put my hair in a ponytail and I was just like, what? I had a thick, thick, ponytail a few months ago this was just like some wispy hairs I mean it was just like what and it looked really bad so I said no take it out take it out that's horrible but then that night after we got we got back from the hospital I knew I was going well, not no it wasn't night <laughs> it wasn't night time for everybody else it was just was for me <laughs> when we got back from the hospital and I was going to bed I was like, just put it in a ponytail just to, you know, keep it out of my face and stuff. Even though I usually sleep with it in a clippy on top of my head. So he put it in a ponytail and then I slept. And then um, after I had got up, our son Dakota came over. I said, Dakota, look at my ponytail. And he's like, what happened to your hair? And I was like, I don't know. It's just gone. Like, all this should be the same length. And it's just not. This is a I, don't, I just don't know. <laughs> you know, and usually when we go out and I'm out and about going to town, I put on a headband. I'll put on a headband and just pull this back. And so that's what I've been doing. Thanks to you guys for suggesting that. And um, you, some of you guys sent me some beautiful headbands that I wear. But, um, yeah, my hair is just, it's just disappearing. Like, I just don't know, but it's gone. It really is. It is so thin. Like, I, I know you can't really see how thin it is and how bad that looks, but the ponytail, I used to have this very, very thick 
thick ponytail just a few months ago. When he put it in a ponytail, he had to do that ponytail holder so many times that it was, it was, <laughs> like when I held it up, you could see how many times he did that ponytail. And it was a lot because the hair, it's just nothing there to put in it. It's not, so. So what are you guys watching? Um, what movies are you watching? What TV shows are you watching? Thought I'd share with you some that I am watching. Let me get a sip of this delicious coffee again. Thank you, Lisa, for that box of coffee. I'm going to enjoy sampling those this month. Okay, so what am I watching? I started watching Tracker on Paramount Plus. It comes on, um, I believe a new episode comes out on Sunday nights or Sundays. I'm not sure. But anyway, I think, um, I think I've watched two episodes so far and I really like it. It's, um, I don't know what this guy goes around and finds missing people. I like shows like that. I like detective mystery type shows. So that's good. And then on Max, I am watching True Detective. And that's kind of turned a little bit like the plot, not the plot, but the storyline or just the way it's going. It's kind of twisted a little bit and in a way that I'm not really sure I'm a little iffy about. But I'm going to continue watching it anyway and see it through and see how that plays out. On um, Philo, um, Little People Big World just started back. I think we've had one episode, maybe two, two episodes, I think, so far. So, I'm going to watch that out. And um, I think this is Tori and Zach's last season to be on there. They've quit the show, according to their uh, vlog. They're not going to be on there anymore. Um, and also on Philo, I'm watching The Way Home. I've been watching it, like... We're on season two. I, I really enjoyed season one. Season two, we're about five or six episodes in maybe now. I'm not really sure on that, but um, I mean, I enjoy that. Um, on Paramount Plus, also I'm watching Young Sheldon. This is the seventh season and the last season of that also. They always cancel the season, the shows that I really love. <laughs> And also on Paramount Plus, I watch um, watching The Neighborhood, and I think we're about on the third or fourth season of that. I mean, not season, episode. I think it's season six. Season six, about the third or fourth episode in, maybe. And those are quick little shows. Um, on, I believe, Netflix, I'm watching Resident Alien. I had watched all of season one and really enjoyed it. And so it's just a silly show that you don't have to really think about while you're watching, you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> I'm on season two. I think there are three seasons out because I did see um, maybe on Peacock, there's three seasons. I'm on season two on Netflix. Now, if I watch that and it's not a third season on there, I'll just switch over to <laughs> Peacock and watch the third season over there. <laughs> Um, and then, um, I think this is on Peacock also. I'm watching the 25th season of Law and Order Special Victims Unit with, um, Detective Olivia Benson. So, um, yeah, 25 seasons of that. So I'm on 20, I'm watching it. I think I've watched up to episode five. So I got episode six on there now that I can go and watch. So, I have a lot of shows that I'm watching. Oh, I wrote down this one. Um, just because I have watched season one and two. And I'm anticipating season three. It's on... This is on Peacock. I don't know if it's anywhere else. Wolf Like Me. Has anyone else watched that? Like, it was really good. I really... <laughs> it's, it's not a serious show at all. It is not a serious show at all, believe me. And it is, uh, it has a lot of funniness to it. And just like, what? What? <laughs> so, I'm enjoying that. Wolf Like Me. I mean, I did watch season one and two of that already. I could probably go back and watch them again. 
but I am anticipating whenever season three is going to come out. I hope they do not cancel it because I really want to see season three. And then something else that I'm watching that is just a, um, just a, nothing serious. You know, when you need to watch something, but you don't really want to focus on what you're watching, but yet you need something playing. I'm watching Bob's Burgers on Hulu. <laughs> it's so silly. It's the dumbest show. <laughs> it's a cartoon. It's the dumbest show ever. So anyway... I watch that when I just need to watch something dumb that I don't have to think about or, you know, focus on too much. I, I like shows like that sometimes where, you know, it's not, it's not taking any brain cells from me. <laughs> I'm donating brain cells. I don't know. Anyway, guys, uh, that's, that's the shows that I'm watching. So, in the comments below, tell me what you have going on this week, what's going on in your life, and also tell me any shows or movies that you're watching that I could jot down that, you know, I might want to watch later or something. So, yeah. But I hope you all have a great day and a wonderful day. My hand, um, we will be unwrapping it later today, and I will do a video on that. Um... Last night, Big Daddy had went to bed, and I was doing stuff around the house, and I heard it. I heard it bad several times, because I'm using these two thumbs to do stuff, right? <laughs> this is what I got to work with. And at one point, I did try to reach that pinky over just by accident. I really wasn't trying to use the pinky, but it just wants to help. <laughs> And it did. It hurt all this up here. Mm -mm. And I did that like two or three times. I mean, I did it more than once. And each time it just hurt really bad. And I was just like, oh, you know. But then it subsided. But that pinky just wants to help. And I wanted to help too, but not yet. It needs to heal. All this needs to heal. And swelling needs to go down before I start um, training that pinky. <laughs> But last night, I'm sitting here with these two fingers. Okay, I I had a bag of, um, in here, in my purse, there was a bag of um, Hershey Kisses, chocolate Hershey Kisses, and I wanted one so bad. And so I got them out, and then I was like, I couldn't open it. So I put it down on my desk. I laid it on my desk, and I used my two pinkies. Now I was on the phone with my friend Angela. The things that we say and do and come up with, I don't know. We're ridiculous and delirious. <laughs> I get delirious. I'm sitting there trying to open that with these two fingers. It was a mess. Like, if anybody had been watching me, they would have been laughing their butt off. I, I got that open. <laughs> I was not going to miss out on that chocolate, okay? I got it open. I got my Hershey's kiss. But I had to work for it. <laughs> I had to work hard for that chocolate. But this is what I got work to work with. And so I'm using this thumb a lot. Because that's all I've got. And so I do have a place on that thumb that is hurting me. And I've looked and looked at it. And there's a little dot. I don't know if I have poked it with something. Or if it has a little cut or what's going on with it but this thumb there's a little place right here that's very very tender and it hurts right there but all i have is this thumb like i'm having to do everything with this thumb you know i don't have a choice I, that's all i got <laughs> so anytime i'm trying to open something pick something up or do anything Little thumpkin here <laughs> is getting a workout. And then this little thumpkin is getting a workout too. <laughs> I know there's some little song. Where is thumpkin? Here I am. I don't know. There's a little song. I have to look that up. Also, also, 
back when I think Elijah was little, there was a show called Spy Kids, and it had this little man, Thumpkin, and I have a Thumpkin. I think his name is Thumpkin. I'm going to go, I'm going to get him and show him in another video. I had, one time when I had lost, I don't know, I had lost a few fingers. I had this purple purse that I carried at the time. And it had pocket on the outside and I stuck Thumpkin in there. So he was always looking out at my um, purse, poking up, sticking out that pocket. I have him in my doll room. I know exactly what drawer he's in and everything. So I'm going to get him back out because, um... I think me and Thumpkin are going to be friends. Uh, but I'm having to use this thumb and this thumb to do everything that I'm doing. Whatever I do, that's that's what I got to work with. So, I don't know. Sissy is just all over the place tonight. She just got on top of the dining chair, the chair rail right here. And then jumped over to a table over there. Now she's looking around the door facing to see what's around there. <laughs> anyway, guys, pray for this finger if you don't mind. I don't know what is going on there, but it hurts deep in there really bad. Um, I, I hope I've just kind of injured it and in doing, you know, whatever, everything that I'm doing. I mean, I can't stop using it because it's all I got. So, if you don't mind, say a prayer for that thumb. Well, guys, I'm going to let you get going. I hope you enjoy your Sunday or whatever day you're, work you're watching this. You know, it doesn't matter if you're watching this um, next Sunday. <laughs> There's no schedule. These videos are here for your convenience. You watch them whenever you get a chance. I just hope that you get to watch them before the month is over. <laughs> so, we're starting a new month. So, it is March. I'm trying to think if I have anything significant going on in March. But I don't think so. I don't know if I do or not. But, I'm kind of... <laughs> Healing. Uh, that's what I have going on this month. This healing of this hand. Letting the swelling go down and all that. I mean, I really can't just like plan anything else. Because I've got to let that get better first. Right? Alright guys. Remember, it's a beautiful day to crochet. Or do anything else that you have going on. This, you know, crafts and stuff like that. Whatever it is you work on. I know we all work on different crafts. I'm going to list those in another video. Just so that I know. So, we'll be back to that. So, don't list them today. Let's list them another day. <laughs> Bye, friends. Love you guys. And I appreciate you all so very much. And I'll see you in the next video.